Okay, so we going to Jersey for this one. You know what the video is about, so we are not going to waste any time, let's jump right in. Darnell Reeves. On December 12, 2008, members of the Jersey City Police Department responded to a shooting on 259 Clinton Avenue in Jersey City. Henry Molesky was found face down in the street. Molesky died two days later from a single gunshot wound to the right temple from a small caliber round. The weapon was never recovered. Molesky was an auto repair mechanic who had started teaching auto repair to students at Dickinson High School. Allegedly, Molesky had been robbed at a liquor store by a relative of a man named Darnell Reeves. Darnell Reeves was a five-star general in the Bloods gang. He called police three times before he took it upon himself to go confront the perps. Molesky then drove to the spot where he had known Darnell and the Bloods to hang out, Clinton Avenue. Allegedly, at the scene, were four individuals. Tim, who was Darnell's best friend at the time, Darnell's brother, Nickwin, a dude named Brandon and Darnell himself. Tim, who was initially charged with a murder, testified at trial. He stated that after the murder, Darnell confessed to him, saying Molesky had got out of his car and came at him with something in his hand, and Darnell shot him. He also stated that he indeed saw Molesky that night at the liquor store on Clinton and West Side Avenue. According to Brandon, when Molesky pulled up and confronted them, Darnell told his brother to go get the gun. The gun was stashed in a mattress in a nearby alley. Brandon also testified that he seen Molesky that night. He stated that before the shooting, everyone walked away, three seconds later, he heard the shot. Molesky fell on the ground and he could still hear his head hitting the pavement. A few days after the murder, Tim was picked up on an unrelated domestic assault charge. Allegedly, he put a gun to woman's head and said he was going to kill her. Shortly thereafter, he was charged with a Molesky murder. As for Darnell, his first trial on the murder charge ended in a hung jury. The reputed high-ranking Blood Street gang member faced 30 years to life in prison if convicted. Tim was later cleared and the charges were dropped. Nickwin, Darnell's brother, was charged in Molesky's murder and he was acquitted on the murder charge but convicted on a weapons charges. Brandon, the brother of a Jersey City police officer assigned to the Hudson County Prosecutor's Office during the murder probe, was a person of interest in the killing, but he was never charged. His defense attorney, Adrian Edward, expressed that Brandon and Tim were not incredible witnesses. In fact, they made inconsistent statements and had the motive to lie in order to save themselves. She also believed it was possible that Brandon may have been provided protection by his brother, the police officer. One shooting, one incident, all the different people. This case has been built in reasonable doubt. Darnell did get hit with weapons charges despite the hung jury. The second time he was tried, he was acquitted of the murder charge. He was sentenced to 16 years in prison in 2012 for weapons charges. Albert Robinson, aka Al B. Al. Al B. Al, his brother, Jamir, and cousin, Joshua, grew up in and around the Marion Garden housing projects in Jersey City. Members and associates of the Marion Garden Street Gang routinely distributed crack cocaine and heroin, among other controlled substances. They engaged in acts of violence, including numerous assaults, shootings, and murders, which targeted rival gang members and others. Marion Gardens has had a strong blood gang presence in its past. Al B. Al had been wilding since young. At age 9, possibly younger, he and others would sneak and retrieve his uncle's handgun, which he kept stashed in the basement. Some of his uncles would actually put guns in his hand, as he compared to scenes in Menace to Society. The family would spend a lot of time over on Park Street, where his grandmother lived. It was around this time that Al B. Al confirmed that he wanted to pursue a music career. His pops was a part of a group which some of you may know, called Sweet Slick and Slide. They used to be on the scene with Dougie Fresh and Biz Markie back in the dawn of hip-hop era. Although he aspired to be a rap artist, he would still fall victim to the circumstances of his poverty-stricken neighborhood. By 2001, when he was 13, he and some others got into a brawl, in which someone's jaw was broke. From here on out, he would be in and out of jail for a series of assaults and firearms possession. Joshua, cousin of Al B. Al, was another dangerous dude, check this out. Joseph Budden II, also known as Joe Budden, is also from Jersey City, although he spent his early years in Spanish Harlem. In 2003, allegedly, Joe, 22 at the time, told police he was driving his Humvee with two passengers. 
He said he was parked up at Gifford and Bergen Avenues at about 1.30 a.m. when a man on a bicycle pulled up alongside the front passenger's window. The man, wearing a ski mask, pulled out a handgun, pointed it at the passenger and pulled the trigger, but nothing happened, Budden told police. The man continued to pull the trigger, but the gun only clicked and didn't fire, he said. The masked man then turned the gun on Budden and pulled the trigger several more times, but again the gun only clicked, Budden said. The man then said, ah, I'm just playing, and rode away on his bicycle. Budden pursued the bike, getting close enough at Brinkerhoff Street and Bergen Avenue to see the man's face, by then, he had pulled off the ski mask. While being trailed, he managed to lose Joe on Communipaw Avenue near Crown Chicken, a half block from the West District Police Station. The man apparently realized Button was following him and jumped off his bike, dashing through a nearby doorway to hide. However, the alleged gunman and cousin of Al B. Al, Joshua Robinson, 23, at the time, was soon arrested. Turns out, the building he'd run into was Jersey City's West District Police Station. Police found Joshua crouching inside the doorway and took him into custody, report said. Officers found a 9mm handgun on the top of the police station steps. It had a bullet jammed in its chamber. Officers also found the bike and the ski mask. He was charged with aggravated assault, weapons charges, and possibly more. In 2004, he would go to jail for a three-four year stint. Whether this story is true or not, ask Joe Budden. Members of Marion Gardens made money off drugs, including heroin. In March 2006, Jamil Robinson, brother of Al B. Al, was one of three men arrested by Jersey City Police. He was passenger in a car when plainclothes police stopped them on Kennedy Boulevard for running a red light on Kensington Avenue. After searching the car, police found over 96 vials of suspected heroin, other drugs and a 25 or 25 caliber handgun. Jamil was hit with weapons and drug charges. By 2007, his cousin Joshua was released from prison for the Joe Budden situation, weapons charges and aggravated assault. As for Al B. Al, he served time in prison from February 2007 to February 2008 for aggravated assault by pointing a firearm, unlawful possession of a handgun and drug possession. By 2010, he would lose good friend Bango. Bango was shot in the head and chest at about 3.15 a.m. while at a friend's crib on Wegman Parkway. He was pronounced dead at the Jersey City Medical Center about 30 minutes later. A dude named Bland and another named Jacobs came into the apartment and both shot Bango with semi-automatic handguns. At 11.30 p.m. later that day, Bango's friend, Ezekiel Sims, 31, of Stevens Avenue, was shot once in the head execution style in a stairwell at the Marion Gardens housing complex, where Jordan lived. The thought was, it could be that the Bango and Sims murders were related or some sort of setup. If you know, you know. On April 1, 2010, and a few months after the Bango murder, Jamil would be released on parole from Wagner Youth Correctional Facility in Bordentown. Another murder would take place that summer. June 5, 2010. Police were called to the area between 70 and 90 Hudson Street. It was a late Friday night and on a report of a disturbance. An officer, who was working an off-duty job nearby, was first on the scene and discovered a large fight in progress. The officer observed two men shooting large-caliber semi-automatic weapons. He ordered the men to drop their weapons, but they ran off. Mac jazzed down and held the gunman, while the second gunman escaped. It was not clear how Williams figured into the gunfight. This officer did not see Williams get shot, but it was soon evident there was a man in the water. Officers struggled to help Williams out of the water, but they failed, and Williams drowned. It was learned later that he likely couldn't swim. The search in the harbor and along the waterfront was aided by Port Authority police and divers, but William's body was not immediately recovered. Upon inspecting the body, it was learned that he was shot at least once in the abdomen. The gunman who was arrested at the scene was charged with a murder, after initially being charged with aggravated assault, resisting arrest and weapons possession. This person, the shooter, turned out to be Joshua, Al B. Al's cousin. He was in possession of a semi-automatic pistol and was arrested at the scene by a Jersey City police officer. The bullet taken from William's body matched the gun found on Joshua. It was later determined that Al B. Al was on the scene. Allegedly, he was responsible for throwing William's body over the railing into the Hudson River after he was shot, and that's how he ended up in the water. With this, Joshua and Al B. Al head back to prison. Fortunately, for Al B. Al, he had someone to co-sign his bail, an old friend. 
In addition to making music, Al B. Al also played football at Lincoln High School in his younger days. He befriended Kenny Britt during those days, who played for Bain High School in Jersey City, before going on to play in the NFL. Kenny would also be at the recording studio with Al B. Al at times. On June 30, 2013, while Joshua and Al B. were fighting the murder case, Al B.'s brother, Jamir, was shot and killed near Bergen and Clinton Avenues. Anthony, 22, of Bergen Avenue shot Jamir, 28 at the time, a total of five times. Three times in the upper right back, once in the back right thigh and once in the jaw. Robinson was later pronounced dead at the Jersey City Medical Center Barnabas Health. No witnesses could or would say what it was about, which escalated into violence. Another dude named Jay was also charged with a murder, but the case was later dismissed. After the shooting, Anthony was arrested at Bergen and Lexington Avenues, two blocks from the crime scene. He would end up getting 13 years. With the weight of Jamir's death, and also, leaving his mother, Al B had to continue fighting the murder. After four years at trial, Joshua would eventually cop out to 10 years. According to Al B. Al, in a Vlad TV interview, he talked about Joshua having some other federal case looming over him, and thought it would be better for him to cop out in this situation. As for Al though, he was facing a slew of charges and about 100 years of time. The judge was offering very little to nothing, which basically forced Al to go to trial. He would need an attorney that can prove his innocence, one that could beat a murder rap. That attorney, Adrian Edward. She had won a murder case at trial for fellow Bloods member, Darnell Reeves, a few years prior. After a four-year trial, it was determined that there was no proof that Al threw William's body in the Hudson. As a result, he beat the murder, which also resulted in another win for Adrian Edward. He had already served four years of a five-year bid for possession of a firearm, so he would be home by June of 2015. Before the year would end, he would have to attend another funeral. This time it was for his younger homie, Mark. He didn't want to attend any more funerals after his brother died, but he did anyway. Whether you believe he is right or wrong, he wore his hood on his back. That's the way it goes. During this time, he dropped some music and gained more traction and looks. He did interviews, most notably, Vlad TV and Hot 97, as well as a freestyle with Funk Flex. Things was going up, getting more lit. But the street life is one thing that's hard to escape. In 2016, it was reported that Al B. Al suffered a gunshot wound to his right forearm in an incident at Baldwin Avenue and Rock Street at 6.50 p.m. He refused medical attention, allegedly, he was unharmed or only grazed. A second victim was grazed in the lower back by the same gunfire less than a block away, at Baldwin Avenue near Academy Street. The man, who appeared to be in his mid-twenties, was treated at the Jersey City Medical Center. It was determined that he was an unintended target. Al got on Snapchat after the shooting to celebrate dodging serious injury. He was chanting, bullets must be blanks, because they keep missing. Young boys around the Marion Gardens complex were putting in pain throughout this time. It was a coming of age moment there, and they would go on a drill later in honor of Al B. Al's brother, Jamir. We covered that in the Marion Garden story, so watch it if you haven't already. Moving along. By 2017, Darnell Reeves, a fellow Blood member of Al B. Al, came home from his weapons charge. On August 23, 2019, police responded to the area of Wall Street in Passaic just after 2 a.m. for a shooting. Officers found that two men had been shot. One of the victims, a 34-year-old Patterson man, was taken to St. Joseph's Regional Medical Center in Patterson. The other man, a 30-year-old Patterson resident, was shot but did not sustain any injuries. Two people were arrested in connection to the shooting. Al B. Al and Darnell Reeves were both charged with two counts of first-degree attempted murder and unlawful possession of a handgun. Al was arrested in Avenal by the New Jersey State Police Fugitive Task Force. Darnell Reeves, 35, was taken into custody in Kenilworth by members of the state's Fugitive Task Force. They now face the prospect of serving 10 to 20 years in prison for each count of attempted murder. Despite that, he still dropped King Ob. As for this story, not really much else to talk about, except the fact that we have an idea of who their defense attorney might be. Remember to check out the Marion Gardens story if you are interested. But as always, stay low, and thanks for watching.